On Friday, it was reported that Republicans have so-called plan to prioritize payments if Congress fails to address the debt ceiling. So I want to be very, very clear here, as I have been, as the President has been, uh, this is not a plan. It is a recipe for economic catastrophe. As President Biden has made clear, Congress must deal with the debt limit and must do so without conditions. But congressional Republicans are threatening to hold the nation's full faith and credit, a mandate of the Constitution hostage to their demands to cut Social Security, to cut Medicare, and to cut Medicaid. Brinksmanship that threatens the global economy. Their latest idea is that rather than paying its bills, the United States should make payment to wealthy bondholders, including foreign investors, and stop payments for border security, food safety, nursing homes, school lunches, the FAA, drug enforcement, and other programs Americans rely on every single day. This so-called prioritization scheme makes Republicans' priorities pretty clear, crystal clear, if I may add. They want to put wealthy bondholders over ordinary Americans who want safe food, safe skies, safe communities, and secure borders. And it does not, it does nothing, absolutely nothing to change the fact that failing to deal with the debt limit would cause economic catastrophe. Bipartisan former Treasury secretaries and independent experts have called out how dangerous failing to raise the debt ceiling would be. And for example, I'll give you a couple. The Chamber of Commerce said it would have catastrophic economic consequences, end quote. In 2011, then Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner called it unworkable and also harmful. And a former economist to Republican Senators Rob Portman, Marco Rubio, and Mitt Romney called it really bad idea and, I quote, disaster. This is just another attempt by congressional Republicans to force unpopular cuts on programs critical to seniors, the middle class, and working families. Congress needs to act and do so swiftly. There is no excuse for political brinksmanship when American jobs and economic safety is on the line here. And the, the debt ceiling is supposed to reach its ceiling on Thursday. How do you see this debt ceiling fight playing out? What's your strategy for getting an agreement? So look, we have been very clear on this, and I said it at the top, I said it on Friday, and I'll say it today, so has the President. Uh, this should not be political brinksmanship. We should be uh, dealing with the debt ceiling without, without conditions. Uh, it is important. We're not going to work our way around this. We're not going to negotiate on this. This is the basic, the basic duties of Congress, is to deal with this issue. And let's not forget, in the last administration, they, they, meaning Democrats and Republicans, were able to deal with the debt limit uh, three times, three times. So this is something that needs to be done, that should be done, and we call on Congress to act. Lastly, is the President going to sit down with Republicans and talk about this? Again, this is something that uh, should be done without conditions. We have been very, very clear about that. Uh, we are not going to be negotiating uh, over the debt ceiling. Uh, but I'll say this more broadly. At the start of the new Congress, and I actually spoke about this last week, we're reaching out to all members in both parties to build relationships and establish points of contact. That is something that the Office of Ledge Affairs has done. Uh, for the past couple of weeks. Uh, but, you know, this has been done, when you talk about the debt ceiling, it has been done in a bipartisan way, and there should be bipartisan cooperation to address this. It should not be a political football. This should not be a political football, and we should do it without conditions.